thick again guys um I didn't talk about it a lot on this channel but I had quite a bit of postpartum hair loss and I've always had naturally very thick hair and for a while my hair was feeling real thin it didn't look that bad because I had such thick hair that losing some wasn't that big of a deal but it is growing back in like I think my postpartum hair regrowth my baby hairs have now hit about here and you can tell like that volume is back, but I'm gonna pull this out of my face because we are gonna make some lunch. There we go. Hi, my name is Gretchen. Welcome back to my channel. That was a bit of a chaotic opening. We've had a fun Saturday morning. We went to the grand opening of a coffee shop slash chocolate place. That was so much fun and beautiful. Our friends worked there. It was such a nice way to start the weekend, to kick it off. And then I had some life admin, little ones down, and I'm hungry and we're gonna make lunch. And I thought I would show you one of my go-to fast, easy recipes, so we're gonna do this. I'm gonna start with making some crispy Brussels sprouts, and then we're gonna do my super easy homemade mac and cheese. Let's get started. I'll put all of like my tips and recipe notes actually um, probably down below, or I'll link them somewhere, but I might just write it in the description. For the brussels, I like to quarter them, remove any of the outside leaves, usually just like one layer, um, a little bit more if they're a little older and starting to get a little wilty. But do as your discretion, onto a baking sheet, sprinkle with salt and pepper, olive oil, and toss them cut side down in the oven at 375 degrees. And I usually had them in there for like, 15, 20 minutes or something, just until they're like black and crispy, not like firm, but like crispy up on the bottom. Here is what we're doing for our mac and cheese. We've got some milk, olive oil, your cheese of choice, flour, and then of course your pasta. I made more pasta than I need because I find it really convenient to have some in the refrigerator for faster lunches. So my full recipe, makes enough for like two to three people is usually what i make for it and then i would do more if i was making a really big batch but if i'm making enough mac and cheese for like me and my husband and our little girl i do a tablespoon of flour a tablespoon of olive oil a half cup of milk and the cheese but because i'm trying to only make a batch that's big enough for me i'm going to half that and we're going to do roughly half a tablespoon worth of all those, uh, which is about three, one and a half teaspoons. So we'll use three of these little half teaspoons. And I start with making the roux. So that is going to be half a tablespoon of flour. And I put that directly into our pot. If you just boiled and made pasta, then you can do it directly in that. If not, I do it in like a saucepan and then I add my pre-cooked pasta and it warms up. Uh, next, we match it with olive oil. So no matter how big of a batch you're doing or small of a batch you're doing, you're gonna do the same amount of olive oil as flour. Um, one. 
Okay. And we're gonna put that back on the heat, stir the olive oil and the flour. Let's see if you can, oh no, you're not gonna be able to see it. You're gonna stir it so that it's all combined and it's almost a paste. It's gonna be a little thin for a paste. And it seems like very little in a pot this size, but um, it's, it'll be enough. And you're just gonna let that sit on medium heat, like medium low heat, like a three or four, until it starts to bubble. If you wanna add anything additional to your sauce, this actually tends to be the time that I do it. I like to add a little bit of granulated garlic so it's a little garlicky and some fresh pepper because I really like a mac and cheese with pepper in it. I know that's not everybody's jam, but um, I do that while well, this, and then we're gonna add our milk. So that our little roux gets incorporated into the milk. It's gonna be super watery. We're gonna add our cheese. I generally eyeball the cheese, but I would say quarter to a half cup, depending on what kind of cheese you're using. Like if it's Parmesan, you're probably gonna end up with a pretty hefty amount. I'm using a white cheddar. I will use Parmesan if I'm doing like an Alfredo, but I like to use a white cheddar. I'm doing a white sauce and I think I put about a quarter cup in. Okay, uh, so that is the actual mac and cheese part done. Our Brussels are probably about ready as well. Oh yeah, those look great. There we go. Uh, I would say once I'm doing the sauce, the sauce itself probably takes like five minutes. So it really is a pretty fast and easy meal to do. Obviously you can top it however you want. I like to top directly with the Brussels sprouts because I love a crispy Brussels sprout. And I also think those sprouts taste really good with the cheese sauce. Okay, it's a few hours later. We've hit that time of day where uh, the lighting in my bedroom isn't ideal for filming, but here we are. Uh, I changed out my dress already into some comfy clothes because I was do, like, doing a few things like cleaning the bathroom and stuff and just doing that in a nice dress felt a little ridiculous. And it's already after five, so no, no reason to be super dressed up tonight on a Saturday night where I'm just staying in and it's raining again. Uh, anyway, today was one of those like wash everything days. So we have a load of towels that are in the dryer right now and a load of our regular clothes that are in the wash. And earlier we did all of our sheets, hers and ours. Whoop. <laughs> and um, now we're remaking the bed. Ooh. Oh dear. Did it fall? We're having a little bit of problems with the drying rack. It's 
the next day. Hi. So the last thing I filmed, I was putting on Christmas bedding. And I wanted to chat through it and show it, but like the lighting was getting so bad in the evening in our place and I just thought it would be better to show it in the daylight. <laughs> uh, so we'll chat through this. This is like the only Christmassy, early Christmassy decorating that I think I'm going to do. I was just really excited to put the Christmas bedding on. We'd already had our Christmas sheets out. It's a long story. We traveled. I'd actually left my pillow and pillowcase at a relative's house. So we didn't have the right full set for the sheets that we had been using. And I ended up switching to these sheets. And then because I switched to the Christmas sheets, I was like, oh, we're going to put out the Christmas quilt because I put out the Christmas quilt. I wanted to put out the Christmas duvet. So that's that's kind of the reason for why I ended up switching over to my Christmas stuff this early. Uh, I don't generally decorate for Christmas that early. Plus this year we were hosting my husband's parents from France for Thanksgiving and it's gonna be their first Thanksgiving with me cooking. Um, they've done a Thanksgiving before, but this is gonna be the first time, you know, at our place with me cooking and I just wanted to feel very fall festive. So I'm really leaning into Thanksgiving this year and giving it its moment. Here is our Christmas bedding. And I actually do have a really cute throw pillow that I had on here last year that's like a Scotty dog all wrapped up in Christmas lights, but it's still in storage. So we'll start back here. These shams, which match the quilt is Pottery Barn, and I love this quilt. I'll pull this back for a second. I love that it has this contrasting gray on the inside. For some reason, I just like that in the little pop of the, the stitching. But it's just a really cozy quilt. It's velvet, and it's probably my favorite quilt that I own that's, a, that's velvet. And then we have our duvet shams and our duvet and this is also from the Pottery Barn collection. I think most of this is still available. Like I believe these are the patterns that they tend to bring back year after year. So I'll try to link them if they are indeed available, but this is the uh, Stuart plaid. Honestly, you're gonna see a lot of Stuart plaid in my Christmas decor because I really like it. Marceline has a crib sheet that is also the Stuart plaid. Our shower curtain in the winter is Stuart plaid. Uh, also from Pottery Barn. Both of those, they're all from Pottery Barn. And then I also, my like bathrobe in the winter. Also Pottery Barn, Stuart plaid. Back to the bedding. This uh, pillow, which I like to use on our bed. It's so like fluffy on one side and knit on the other. Also Pottery Barn. And then the sheets are Bowl and Branch. I got these a long time ago. I think they were one of the first pairs of sheets that I actually bought from Bowling Branch. I think I bought them right before I bought like the signature ones or I bought those two pairs at the same time. But I loved the stitching on this. It just felt very festive to me. It's like all kind of Nordic almost in the way that it goes and it's on the cuff of the sheet as well but they're also just they're very crisp so the other bowl and branch sheets that I have had on that I think I've talked through in a video before if I haven't let me know and I can do a video roundup of all my bowl and branch uh, but they're more like satiny cotton silk like they're more of a luxe this is more of a Pascal like is that how you say that this is more crisp this is more of a crisp cotton but very cozy very nice and all of these items were investments, but again, we've used these year after year after year after year, and they have really held up. Like it looks, it looks as if I just, I'm gonna end this video here. If you made it to the end, thank you so much for watching. I'm just gonna spend the rest of the day probably watching like 90s Meg Ryan movies because it's a cozy fall weekend and that just feels like it hits the vibe, but Again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment. It always makes my day. I um, have some really fun videos coming as well. I think next video will probably lean really heavy into Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving planning and really give Thanksgiving its moment. I have a bathroom remodel coming as well. We're so close to being done and being able to share it. So fun things on the horizon. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of that. And thank you again for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.
listening today.